You know, when we were doing it, we actually thought we were doing something for the ages. I thought, why not mix the real world of psychic research and take that jargon and that knowledge and make it good old-fashioned ghost comedy. I think we fully believed that we were going to carve out a little niche in film history. The first day, I'm busy sort of setting up some cameras, and I look up and suddenly coming at me are the three Ghostbusters in full regalia. And I just got this wonderful shiver down my back that I was about to do something special. It's such a great ensemble. You just love these guys. We have some great toys, uh, backpacks and little guns. Of course, there was nothing coming out. I'm pretending you're shooting with this gun. <laughs> there was nothing else like it. It was funny and fresh. You never really kind of knew what Bill would do. Something about being with Bill Murray on the streets of New York that's like nothing else. There's no life like making movies. We came, we saw, we kicked its ass. It wasn't a matter of doing a major logo for their ad campaign. It was to do something they could put on their shirts and on the side of the car. We did a lot of driving around as the Ghostbusters with no cameras around anywhere. Prue would often be in tears from laughing at whatever they were up to. I blame myself. So do I. It goes, imagine like an eight-year-old kid grabs a fire hose and turns it on and just starts whipping them around the room to come up with a look that was like rubberized light. The signature look to Ghostbusters. It pulled you out of your world. Picture with a lot of crazy monsters, it's a hell of a thing. He slimed me. Slimer was an interesting animal to design because it was quite a trek. Anybody who makes a movie, the first thing they're going to tell you is the most fun is you get the blow stuff up. First time we walked on that set, it was like, wow. Look! That's when you know you're in a big movie. We had the best of everything. Just taught me, you can write anything and they'll build it. Oh, yeah. When people went to see that movie, they weren't sure what to expect. Who are you going to call? I don't think anybody had any idea. All of a sudden, 800 million kids going, hey, dickless. <laughs> I thought this had real legs. The surprise of something new. I thought part of our strength was irreverence and breaking the rules. Two in the box! Ready to go! We be fast and they be slow! At some point my dad decided to shoot me on film and put me in movies so that they could be remembered forever and I could be humiliated until the day I die. Parents keep on pointing out, you know, all the cutesy things you would do as a baby. It was ridiculous. Looking back on it, you know, give me a night like that again. Why are my drippings with goo? He created this really bizarre character. The idea that he's a wannabe Ghostbuster seemed very funny. Hey, I'm a Ghostbuster! It was scarier than I thought it would be, actually. You know, I don't think there was really anything that turned out to be easy. <laughs> Trying to come up with something in the movie that we had never seen before. We'd always thought we were going to create new Ghostbusters. That was supposed to be Ghostbusters 3, where the Ghostbusters go to hell. But then hell looks exactly like New York. Oscar is one of the Ghostbusters. These kids go, oh, when I was in fourth grade and I saw Ghostbusters 2, and I go, boom! Don't tell me that, fourth grade. I was 34 years old when I made that movie. Are you troubled by strange noises in the middle of the night? Do you experience feelings of dread in your basement or attic? If the answer is yes, then don't wait another minute. Pick up the phone and call the professionals. Ghostbusters. We're ready to believe you. The empowering message of Ghostbusters is that no matter what monsters we create in the world, if we have the courage, the tools, the talent, and the fortitude, we can deal with pretty much anything.